Hello and welcome to Procontation Points Video Snark. I'm continuing my read-through of The Plan by Quinn Salisbury. Please make sure that you've seen the other videos in my Snark series about the book before you jump into this one. Chapter 22, Day of Employment 382. Emma comes back to the hotel room at 6 a.m. after having been to the hotel's fitness center. At this point, at least we aren't subjected to more scenes of her running on the treadmill while she thinks her thoughts. When she gets into the room, Alaric is waiting for her. He says that he thought that she'd left, but she denies that she would do that. The narration is kind of vague. I think Alaric is okay with it, and then he leaves. Who actually knows? The next thing I know, Emma is in the shower. She contemplates not shaving her legs in the hopes that this stubble will help keep her in check. I've got nothing. But she feels like she's spiraling out of control and has no idea how she got to this point. She eventually decides to fake it until I make it, and then calls in another plan. At this point, I'm so sick and tired of hearing about Emma's stupid plans. This one barely counts as a plan. And then Alaric randomly comes into the bathroom and hooks Emma's bra for her. Is it just me, or is that weird? Thank you. My voice is soft. He says nothing. I feel his lips against my hair. Never mind. I think I'm no longer a fan of plans. Considering that Emma herself calls her latest plan, and I quote, 4,782, I don't really think that she was that great at coming up with and sticking to plans in the first place. I am staring at my plate. He's in a tie. I don't even know what to say. The narration goes out of its way to establish that Alaric is wearing a tie, but can't bring itself to mention literally anything else. So I'm just going to imagine that he's only wearing the tie and literally nothing else. An hour later, they eat breakfast, but Emma also packs up and the two of them head out. Alaric orders her around in regards to business stuff. He also mentions that he has a dinner with Diana that night. Emma asks what he'd like for her to do while he's doing that, but he says to wear something to go with such and such shoes and to be sitting right next to him. Incoming text. Just checking on you. You okay? Rebecca. Reply. Fine. How is the bedding? Incoming text. Bert will be so disappointed. He had down that cannon would eat you alive by last night. Note to self, never bet against Bert. Oh, hi, guys. Emma hasn't once thought about you since Rebecca decided that Emma should go on this business trip. Can't say that I've missed you. Later, Diana is mildly upset slash irritated that Alaric has asked Emma along on their <coughs> business dinner. She keeps saying all this stuff that Emma should or could be doing instead of eating with the two of them, but Emma keeps saying, I'll ask Mr. Cannon, I'll ask Mr. Cannon. He's so focused, her voice, shrill, echoes in the room behind me. Last trip, he made time for fun. My steps falter. Fun. I sincerely doubt he did any such thing. A vision of Cannon wearing Mickey Mouse ears and holding balloons pops into my head. Not even Emma could possibly be so dense to misunderstand Diana's meaning. He couldn't get that time back from her, unless old TARDIS can also time travel. No. No. You leave Doctor Who out of this dumpster fire. I'm going to ask him. Tonight, after dinner, I'm going to ask him. Maybe this is one plan that will not go awry. The others have sort of bordered on best laid. Seriously, Emma. Your last plan lasted for less than a minute. Emma then grits her teeth through the meeting. She can't stop counting the number of times Diana casually touches Alaric. It's eleven, if anybody gives a f***. Alaric and Emma go to the restaurant. Diana randomly shows up with Emma's old college flame, Mitchell. I think that she's attempting to hook Emma up with anything remotely male, but apparently she doesn't give a hoot about any of her co-workers or else she'd know that Mitchell is married. But then Diana says that Mitchell is divorced, which not even Emma knew about, and the already awkward dinner is suddenly amped up to ten. Alaric is just pissed off that Diana would, first off, bring someone else to dinner like that, and two, that the excuse Diana is giving for having brought Mitch is because she wants for Emma and Mitch to work on whatever project together. Alaric is kind of like, you can't just randomly tell people who don't work for you what to do, and the awkward meter climbs up to eleven. If it's a problem, we can get together another time, he offers. Diana smiles into her wine. She must have gotten a head start at the restaurant bar. Great, Franlin even less inhibited. Oh, it's not a problem, is it, Alaric? 
Why start asking me now, Canon says without infliction. This is a woman who has exactly zero self-awareness. Alaric could show up with a neon sign saying, Not interested in your sexual advances, Diana Frowlin, and she'd still be hanging all over him. When the waiter shows up, Alaric gets up from the table. He then turns to indicate he wants Emma to follow him, so she does after a moment. He says that he'll handle Diana. Emma is just so shocked that he would have volunteered something like that. They return to the table where they place their food orders, but before the waiter can leave, Alaric asks that they box up Emma's and Mitch's food because they have work. Emma is startled by that and then irritated when Diana asks for more wine. As Emma and Mitch leave the restaurant, Alaric asks that Alaric is a piece of work. Emma is beyond pissed over the entire thing, even more so that she was unable to talk to Alaric before their food arrived. But then Emma's anger quickly turns into something akin to a panic attack. Her thoughts start to snowball. She's worried that he thinks that she intentionally lied to him about Mitch's marriage status and that she only just wanted to hook up with Mitch, which is a weird stretch to make. Again, stating the fact that Emma and Mitch were exchanging small talk while they worked, their hands were not down each other's pants or anything. Mitch then asks how long that Emma's had feelings for Alaric because he has freaking eyes, and Emma somehow manages to spin it to make it seem like, of course I have feelings for him. Utter loathing is a feeling. But Mitch doesn't buy it. He says the proof is that Emma's been fuming in the parking lot for ten minutes now. I am not in love with all our canon. Uh, Emma, I never said you were. Oof. Emma then ditches Mitch, goes back to the hotel room, dumps her uneaten food in the trash, and just sits in the dark, thinking about whatever Alaric might be doing with Diana at that very moment. And just when I thought that we'd reached peak toxic behavior, it turns out that there's a new rock bottom yet undiscovered. She also mopes over the fact that the only thing she was to him was a proverbial roll in the hay. I don't really know where that's coming from. His behavior towards Emma has been anything but... Considering that she spent the last year obsessing over Alaric, she sure can ignore those giant social cues when the plot randomly decides that there's not enough drama. If he comes back tonight, I will be whoever he wants me to be. Just let him come back tonight. And look at that, another new level of toxic behavior rock bottom previously undiscovered. Alaric comes back not too long after that. He doesn't really seem to understand what's bothering her, but then again, Emma isn't exactly a prime subject of healthy, well, anything really, but communication would have cleared this up in about five minutes. If I wanted you walking around the hotel in the dark, I wouldn't have booked us into this single room. So, rather than to harass the clerk into giving them the two rooms as planned, he instead... I don't even really have a word for what's going on here, but it's gross, no matter how you look at it. A record skips in my head. While I would love to contemplate how and why anyone dug up an LP just to scratch it inside my brain, it ha and it had better be Don't Worry Be Happy because God knows that song's just asking for it. I had to read this and so do you. To say that Emma is shocked upon hearing about this is an understatement. Emma then says that she's going for a walk. Alaric says that he'll join her. Emma says that she'll stay in the room then. Why? Because it's cold outside, but it's been cold all day. I'm not dressed for it. Then change. This is what you told me to wear. By my side at dinner, but then you left. I left because you told me to leave. Yes, their argument is maddening to read. And of course, after a while, Emma can't help but bring up Diana. Alaric pretends not to know what Emma's talking about, or maybe he's just really that <laughs> stupid I don't know anymore. But he says this in like a super flirtatious way while getting all into Emma's personal space. And I swear that if Emma continues to wangst about how Alaric doesn't notice her after this, I'm going to scream. Whoa, hold up there, buttercup. No fun storming the castle yet. We need to talk. Oh, now Emma's suddenly very much on team. Let's talk about our feelings. Emma randomly tells him a story about how one Christmas, a rabbit wandered into the family backyard. She loved it so much, but then Emma scared it away forever when she tried to pet it. Alaric is as confused as I am about the random ass story, but he has to remind Emma that the rabbit is the one with all the power in both situations here. Does he realize I'm not acting like myself?
I'm sorry, but we've never actually seen Emma who wasn't obsessed over Alaric. Even when the book flashed back to her first day of work, she was somehow obsessed over him after having seen him for two seconds. Later, I think that they're banging, or maybe in post-banging cuddle time. I have no idea. He's actually very sweet. Being a good and attentive lover is in no way going to cover for much of an asshole that he is to literally everybody else in the planet. He straddles me and wraps his arms around my chest, cocooned between my ribs and bedding. That is some painfully, painfully awkward wording. Holy, should we do this right now? I was trying to take a night off, get some perspective. Do I want it to happen like this? Here's a thought that's probably pretty dramatic. Tell him no. Then he tears his sleep shirt over his head, pushing his chest into mine, arms high and bent, looking like a classic Bowflex advertisement. Because when I'm having sexy times with my man, the thing that's running through my head is infomercials. Oh, f- Emma! His eyes roll back into his head where he stores how to do long division. What the f- They bang. It lasts for like three pages. Three of the most unending pages ever. But at least Emma didn't bolt as soon as Alaric was finished. So that's something, I guess. The bar is set really low here. Chapter 23, Day of Employment 383. Emma wakes up about 5 a.m., presumably from another nightmare, but it didn't wake Alaric. She thinks about how she stayed up talking with Alaric and got him to tell her what was going on between him and Diana. And I don't know what to say that I haven't already said before. Alaric keeps telling her to f*** off, but she persists. He says that she's a necessary evil towards the business deal. He then told Emma a bunch of stuff about himself, like how his mother died. And it's like, the time for personal backstory is not right now. Especially once we're as far deep into the I don't give a f about any of these characters rabbit hole as I am. Emma also volunteers info that she was shuffled back and forth between her divorced parents and then forgotten as they started new families. That might explain her obsessive behavior a little. He also asks why she hasn't asked him why he's such an asshole. Besides, you've been slipping. How so? You've been nice to me lately. Because he wanted to bang her. Next question. Back in the present, Emma slips out from the bed and goes to take a shower. There she thinks about how awful that he is and fails to note a single nice thing about him while doing so. So I would say that we're back on this bullshit again, but the truth is, is that we never really got off. But then despite half a page of her being frustrated over what an asshole that Alaric is, He's aloof and distant and cold, and who am I kidding with this line of bullshit? He is the singularly most passionate and responsive man that I have ever known. Once again restating that just because he's good in bed doesn't make up for literally the rest of his ungodly personality. Emma later wakes Alaric up since he failed to do so on his own. He hurries to get ready. They eat breakfast and leave for the office. Emotional state. Defcon 2. And I'm mad at myself about it. Getting really sick and tired of these little before the section headers. It would be better to just jump into the issue rather than to tell us what's going to be coming up. Emma talks with Mitch. Emma herself expresses that she doesn't know if they're talking about business or Alaric, which leads into some insanely confusing writing because I don't know if they're talking about business or Alaric. Even more later, Emma is randomly given a dress via courier. There's a smaller box that contained earrings inside of it. Emma looks through the tissue paper to see if there's a card in and Alaric shows up with this card, but it's blank, so I wonder why he even bothered. He also doesn't say anything and just leaves a ticket for the nutcracker on the desk. Emma thinks about the ballet as she's getting ready to go. Her family used to go when she was younger. How much younger, you ask? Actually, I'm not sure I've been since I got boobs. Alrighty then. But after a while, her family moved on and they all stopped going, and then it was just Emma li living between her parents and their new families. Emma contemplates herself in the mirror and realizes that Alaric bought a dress without thinking of what kind of underwear was needed, so she takes off the bra and then realizes that she's got visible panty lines, so she takes those off too. 
Ulrich shows up. Lord only knows where he was and refuses to look at her much. He's also not talking to her either, so the entire thing is more than a little weird. He doesn't speak until they're at the theater, and he demands that she ask about the blank card. But when she does, he says that he doesn't know why he gave her a blank card. So what was the point of that? He continues on to say that he didn't know how to sign it, like he isn't sure what their relationship is. Emma stutters for a moment before they start making out like teenagers. They're doing it for so long that they miss being able to get to their seats. Yeah, hi. Theater doesn't f work like that, okay? There would have been somebody there to awkwardly clear their throat and say, The show is about to begin. Shall I show you to your seats? They watch the show, and Emma can't stop thinking about how happy that she is. Later, they walk hand in hand through the city a little. They eventually get into a random limo where they make out some more. Have they always been driven around by a limo, or was this a special thing Alaric arranged for the night? He tastes so good. If you left Santa a plate of cannon cookies, he would stuff the whole North Pole into his red velvet bag and lug it down your chimney. I had to read this and so do you. This continues on and on, despite the fact that they're in the back of the limo. I think that we've already established that neither of them give a sh** about public sex after Emma gave him oral in the middle of the hotel hall. Maybe we need to buy some drama mean. Bet that driver is hella crazy from circling the block. I've never understood this. Just go back to your hotel room. Stop humping in the back of a car like a couple of randy teenagers. They eventually make it up to their hotel room. Eventually. And then the narrative spends an ungodly amount of time just describing Alaric and dressing Emma. For the love of sanity, please stop already. There's this one business about stuffing, and I really want to say something about it. But, like, YouTube. Sorry, guys. I think that this is going to be the last romance novel that I do on YouTube. So, they bang. And then, that's the rest of the chapter. I've got nothing anymore.